Hi folks and welcome back to another fly tying video. This one's for Gavin Freo who's asked me to do a humongous. So without further ado, let's get into it. I've got to be honest folks, I was a little reluctant to do this fly because there's so many good videos out there about tying the humongous and I like to tie mine slightly differently from most uh, on a long shank hook and uh, much bigger but I'm going to try and do it how most folks would tie it uh, there's so many different variations it's hard to hard to keep up really so if you're the originator of the humongous and you're offended I'll apologize now so the hook in the vice then is a Hanak H260 barbless hook at size 8 and the thread I'm going to be using today is classic wax thread at 6 aught and it's black so first thing I'm going to do is get plenty of wax onto my thread and I'm going to catch it in immediately behind the eye and just get about a centimetre of thread down then I'm going to come back to approximately 2 millimetres from the eye of the hook I'm going to remove my rat's tail and this is probably the first bit of controversy if you like now a lot of people tie this size fly with the beads on top I'll use my other hand so you can see what I'm doing what I'm going to do is invert my vise and tie it with the bead underneath now once I've got it in place I can manoeuvre it with my fingers just to get it sitting where I want to and you want to get this well lashed down now I've heavily waxed my thread before I've begun just to make sure that this doesn't go anywhere so bear with me while I get as many wraps as I can fit on and fill up that gap between the two dumbbell eyes now what I'm using for my eyes is simply toilet chain and uh, I picked it up at B&Q, it comes in packets now used to be able to buy it loose but them days are gone sadly so I've just got a packet of this stuff but that's uh, pretty well secured in there what I'm going to do now is continue down the shank and approximately where a barb would be on a barbed hook I'm going to build a little bump at the back here now I do this on most of my long tailed flies as it prevents tail fouling on the hook when you're fishing some people just put a loop underneath their tail but I like to do this then I'm going to in open turns bring a thread back up to the eye next I'm going to add in some gold flash at the tail what I'm using is some uh, ice dubbing from Simplify and I'll just take a little bit off of that now what I like about this is it's really mobile, it's going to move well with a marabou and, and I really like the length is good as well so I'm going to, what I'm going to do is just snip off this over my waist bin and just catch that in all the way up to the bump and I'll bring my thread back down to where it started. Now that's a little long for what I want. Uh, I, I do know guys that want sort of two to three inches. I want it slightly shorter than that. So I'm going to come in and just rip that away with my thumb and forefinger like so. And that's looking pretty good. I don't know how, how well you can see on the camera, but this is really soft and flexible and it will flow well in the water. Next, I'm going to be using for my tail uh, from Comp Candy. This is the Black Jack Marabou, and I already have a Marabou plume that I've been working with here. And what I want to do is take a generous portion from my thumb tip to just pass my knuckle. I want a nice bushy tail. I've just ripped that from the stem. And then what I'm going to do is over my waste basket, I'm going to remove the white bit then I can dress that up to the hook again I'm going to dress it right up to the eyes and catch that in all the way down the body try and keep your marabou on top 
you don't want it coming round and cloaking the gold and that's looking pretty good now I brought my thread back up to the eyes and if I wanted to I could add another plume of marabou if I wanted to make it even bushier than it is because yeah, this will slim right down in the water next then I'm going to use some gold wire as my rib this is a, a 0 0.1 millimeters. again I've already got a piece here that I've been working away with and I'm going to catch that in the entire length of the body and that's looking not too bad now I'm going to wet my thumb and forefinger just damp down that marabou and I'm going to move my wire just in behind the handle in my vice here next then what I'm going to use is some Dave Downey's definite advantage body material now I've got the you see some silver in here because I keep the silver and gold together for my humongous flies and uh, I'm running out of the silver actually I do like the silver but I've got some of the gold here it's a bit worse for wear because it's been scrunched up into the uh, packet but what I'm going to do is remove some of the gold tinsel. What I like about this is it's got a lovely yellow core, which really helps the fly, I think. Uh, I'm going to catch that just by the tip, bring it all the way back, and then I can bring it up to, again, just behind the eyes. Each time I turn it over, I'm going to slick back the sparkly material and I'm getting as many turns in here as is viable you don't need to be over precise uh, because it will be covered up slick all that back and all the way up just in behind the eye and even when you think you can't get another turn in there will be room so make sure you get it crushed right up into the eye there now next I've, I've picked up my thread and I'm going to just ensure that I've got that clamped down with two or three turns take your time because the last thing you want to do at this juncture is um, cut away your gold fritz here and the whole thing pings back on you and you've got to go back so that's looking pretty good so far now folks if you stay till the end I'll show you a little sequence of this in the swim tank and you can see how much movement you get from this fly okay the next thing then is the hackle now with most of mine I like to use a grizzle cape but on this occasion, I'm going to use an old Indian cock cape. It's got very soft fibres. And the key to this fly is in the hackle, the fibres have got to be soft for movement. Uh, before I tie in the hackle, which I've pre-prepared, I'm going to just put some wax on my thread just to catch in the tag. Now you'll notice I've stripped back the feather and left myself about an eighth of an inch to work with. So I'm going to make sure I can see on my side where that stem is and I can catch it in and I'm catching it in quite firmly and I'm going to go over and make sure it is trapped inside there next then I'm going to break the stem so that it comes out at a 90 degree angle from the fly and then I can come in with my hackle pliers at the tip and start to bring my hackle round. Now this looks really big and th that's no accident. It's got to be a big hackle. The fly is all about maximum movement and a lot of guys fish these in pairs so they'll fish them with one on the point, maybe a silver one and then the black and gold on the top dropper. 15 to 20 foot leader and it's known for its abilities to pick up the better fish. I've had some fantastic brownies on this fly over the years and many other anglers have done likewise. 
So we'll just catch that in, make sure it's going nowhere. And then I'm going to just hook my hackle pliers over the handle just to keep it out of the way. And then in not the most tidy way, I'm going to bring up my wire rib. I'm, I'm trying to wind through the hackle, but I'm not overly worried about it. Once you've brought your wire up to where the eyes are, you can simply come in behind like so. Make sure you've cut that into place. Couple of turns in front of the wire. Once you're happy it's secure, tension on the thread, twist the wire away. Next then, the last little bit that's left, you can just, uh, can see I've caught that in below the fly there. So I'm just going to remove the tag, like so, and then I can turn the fly back. And that's looking pretty good. It might look out of proportion, but as I say, the hackle is really important. You want a big hackle on this fly. Okay, I'm going to lick my thumb and forefinger off my left hand, slick everything back out the way, and then I can come in, just crisscrossing over the eyes to be sure, and then I can whip finish at the front here. Now it's got quite a large head in between the bead and I like to finish it off with either varnish or a bit of UV resin, just depending on how much of a hurry I'm in. And there we go. That's my rendition of the Humongous. Again, if folks find that they tie it in a different way and they're happy with that and it catches them fish, fair play. I'm uh, just showing you how I've, uh, I've put it together. So let's have a look at it in the swim tank. Thanks very much for watching the video and if you're interested there is a variation on the humongous that I quite like and I'll put that up on the screen now.